Hello there, everybody, and welcome to The Frozen Frontier. Today we are doing Ferris's prequel. So, Ferris, how's it going, man? Uh, pretty good, you know? I mean, uh, I was just on the show last week, so yeah, not, right. not much has been going on. Yeah, it's but... not been a month and a half or two months. Yeah. Oh, God, there's so many so many things to cover. Should we do, like, the 40-minute intro session really fast? Where we, we? Yeah, I mean, you usually talk about whatever game you've been playing la latest, so I think we've got like yeah. six weeks of games to catch up on. <laughs> yeah, no, I actually, I'll, I'll break it up into a couple sections, but there's one that I should bring up today because I want to recommend a game to you, Neil. Mm. Uh, it's called Dragon's Dogma. And I remember when I first played it, there was like this little like vague sense of um, recollection that I had when I went through it. And later I heard that apparently Capcom intentionally made it to be reminiscent of circa 1990s D&D. &D. Mm. And it has all these little things like you... You have a lantern, like everything's actually dark if you're inside at night and you can carry around like a lantern and you add oil to it. It's got like all these little things that aren't hard or necessarily mm -hmm. major to the gameplay, but they really add that little bit of extra experience to like adventuring around the world. Is this like a um, it's an second person RPG. action adventure? Yeah. Okay. And you like, you fight giant monsters. Oh, and the monsters, like uh, when you fight them, so like you could fight a Cyclops mm -hmm. and if you attack its eye, you can actually like gouge out its eye and blind it. Hmm. Uh, if you fight like griffins you can set their wings on fire and force them like crash to the ground and not be able to fly anymore like it's got you fight a lot of giant monsters but it gives you a lot of tactics that you can employ against them is this primarily a single player game mm -hmm. it has um multiplayer components in that you you make like a main pawn right and that's your it's your primary ally for the game and then you can hire other people's pawns so you can have up to a party of four hmm. this yeah. is not a new game either no, no, it just got ported to PC like a year or two ago. Ah. But uh, I do yeah. like single player games. I'm actually not a big fan of multiplayer games. Yeah, the multiplayer component is pretty uh pretty minor. It's neat because you get to like see other people's pawns and hire all sorts of weird shit. I had a waifu on my team for a while. The character's name was that, just literally waifu. Really hurt my role play. I made Van Heel sing and made my main pawn Malachi. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. Is oh, this great. on Steam? Yeah, it's on Steam. I got like a... Oh, man, it's per I got the perfect roleplay going for it, too. I got like a holy scimitar called Cursed Light for Van Helsing. Hmm. Well, I think Divinity Original Sin 2 comes out on Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> so this might have to go in a backlog somewhere. Mm -hmm. Although, to be honest, I'm not really... I was super psyched for Divinity Original Sin 2, and after like watching the trailers and looking at the screenshots, my excitement level has like tanked pretty heavily. Really? Yeah. I have not watched anything about I, I like to buy games knowing as little about them as possible, which is riskier, but I I, I don't I, I don't I, like knowing things about games. I understand. I don't like to build up on the hype either. It's like watching a trailer for a movie and then you're like, oh, well now I know what that movie was. That was great. If I ever want to watch like the extended edition, I'll go watch the whole movie, you know? Yeah, literally the only game I've ever gotten hyped for that I did not wind up disappointed on was The Witcher 3. And even that had little things in there that really, really got to me, man. Yeah. Um, but, but I uh, feel like Divinity Original Sin 2 is falling victim to its own success it's like the first one was so good that the mm. second one got a bigger budget and they threw it all into like special effects and now like mm. it's mostly special effects i heard the writing got slightly more serious with two which which was like the biggest upside to me because my biggest issue with divinity was like it i i liked the silliness of it but it seemed like it didn't have a serious bone in the entire game mm. i it, i never really had a chance to take that game very seriously like it was fun but not uh, not particularly engaged. I could definitely see that, but I'm on the other side of it where I really liked the <laughs> the the goofy fun tone. Uh, but I could see how if you wanted like serious game, that it might have been a little bit uh, of a letdown. So we'll see. I'm definitely gonna play it, but I'm I'm a little a little miffed that it's just That's like fair. everything looks epic at every moment in the game. You can't make anything look cooler than this, but that's like the entire game. And it's just yeah. gonna be like- So it's Final Fantasy basically. Yeah, it's just gonna be like one bland kind of experience because everything is 100, like everything's turned up to 11 the entire way through. And you're like, okay. My very first encounter, there's like a giant octopus attacking the ship and it's like the coolest looking thing ever, but I'm a like first level character. So I'm uh, dealing three damage to the enemy. I see what you're on about, yeah. Yeah. 
You know, it's like uh, the... I'm trying to think of a movie equivalent. It's like Die Hard... Uh, this didn't quite happen with Die Hard series, but like Die Hard 4, 5, 6, like all the subsequent Die Hards after 3 are all just like epic explosions and Bruce Willis is walking through fireballs just shouting his daughter's name looking for her while people die all around him. I mean, the real crime is still the original Die Hard being called a Christmas movie. Um, how is that a crime? It's not a Christmas movie. It is a Christmas movie. It is not a Christmas movie. It is absolutely movie. a Christmas movie. It's set during Christmas. It keeps reminding you that it's set during Christmas. And Christmas plays an integral part in the movie. That's why he's out there. That's why they're attacking this place when they're doing it. Because it's got a party. And because the police presence is low. Because all this other stuff is going on. Christmas plays a, a critical role in the in the film. It's absolutely a Christmas movie. Chris, it... It has a Christmas aesthetic. It is not a Christmas movie. It's because absolutely Christ a Christmas movie. No. 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 Give, give me your give me your best argument on this one, because I okay. I have strong okay. opinions. <laughs> <laughs> all right. How do I put this? Um. All right. So it it has that Christmas aesthetic. It is set during Christmas, but it does not. All Christmas movies basically push on the idea, like you know, Christmas themes, Christmas values, like giving, giving to others, um, charity, all those things. All those mm -hmm. things are Christmas values. Die Hard is not about that. Die Hard is about a guy killing a bunch of terrorists. They're, they're actually you can, bank it's, robbers. It's, they're, they're thieves, not terrorists. Whatever. Um. <laughs> and honestly, the people that he saves in Die Hard are kind of douchebags. Like, a lot of the people in it are not you don't feel like they're they're necessarily Christmas spirited people, but those are the people that he's working to save. I don't know. It's it's not it's not a Christmas movie because it's just a Christmas setting. It has a Christmas aesthetic. But it'd be like if I made a D and D session where you go out and you like invade Santa's workshop and fight like an evil Santa Claus where he's the final boss. That's not a Christmas session. That's just a Christmas it's totally like totally a Christmas session. session. No, no, man. Okay, I see where you're coming from, that it doesn't push the, the Christmas values. Yeah. I, I see that point. That's, that that's, would a, be that's valid on some levels. Just a realistic Christmas movie. <laughs> <sighs> but if every Christmas movie is pushing Christmas values the whole way through, that really kind of like... Yeah, that's pretty shoehorning, right? That like kind of makes every Christmas movie the exact same thing because it's about giving. And that's like, there have been plenty of like Christmas movies that don't have very much to do with giving. Sure, but there's more than one thing that Christmas is supposedly about. Uh, it's not just about giving and charity. Yeah, Christmas is about family. And mm -hmm. this whole movie is about bringing a family back together. It's about family coming together for the holidays. It's about a man wanting is to that, see his children what and try to make about, up with though? his wife. That's the context. That's the entire point of the movie <laughs> is that like, you know, I'm estranged from my wife because I'm like a good cop and a bad husband and I'm going to try and get back together with her. And he like starts to be nice then he blows it. But then like he saves the day, kills all the bad guys and like rescues his wife. And they're like, well, maybe we can give it a shot now. Let's go see our kids. It's Christmas. And then, you know, it's all ruined by the next film, mm. which is terrible and not a Christmas movie. Die Hard 2 was definitely not <laughs> the worst movie ever. Never seen Die Hard 2. Spare yourself. It's like, it's kind of, it's basically the same thing, except it's set in an airport on Christmas Day. And like, there's this time there's like terrorists trying to like uh, free some general or something. But the whole movie revolves around the this general arriving in this airport on the mm -hmm. same day that this massive blizzard strikes. And it's kind of like, really? How did you get the blizzard to strike the airport when the general gets there? And there's just like a lot of really gaping they, plot they stole holes the deep the states, entire. They stole the deep state's weather machine. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's uh, just... <laughs> only with... <laughs> Only other thing, I watched the Death Note movie on Netflix, and that was absolutely just abysmal. It, it was awful. Yeah. But uh, other than that... I expect it to be so, yeah. I guess, I guess I have other games, but I can save those until until next session. Shenzhen IO, go play that. It's a programming game where you build circuits and write code. It's, it's fantastic. God. Oh god, that sounds as bad as Papers, Please. No, no, no. You're no. just doing, like, no, no, no. menial work, and they've, like, turned it into a game. Oh, no. 
So basically the way it works, it's very basic programming. Like it's, it's very simple assembly language. And mm -hmm. um, you, the, the challenge of the game is not that the programming aspect is hard, it's that you have very limited space to work with. So you're doing things that are very, it's a puzzle game. And it, it's, okay. it's meant to be reminiscent of work, but it's meant to be more like an idealized version of work where like you cut out all the bullshit and you just make things. Like you, you, it literally sets you up. Like I printed out a binder here, right? Oh, like I have a binder. That's my technical document organizer for this fictional company that I work at. I filled out a visa application for the, the People's Republic of China. <laughs> oh God, this is exactly like paper, please. They take some sort of job and like, let's make this really lame job into a cool video game. It, I don't know. It's, I don't it know. Is a, I just, it, it cuts all of the like, you don't have any meetings with people. You don't have to worry about like all the usual bullshit that you have to worry about in a real job. It's just you, you make things and it's a, it's a fun puzzle game. All right. And the writing, the writing is actually really good. It's just, it's all told through like email chains with your coworkers. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh. They went, they went all in on the work aesthetic oh and my it's, God. it's genuinely good. Okay. I'll, I'll take your word on that one. I'm definitely not going to try it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, if you, if you like programming or you want to give programming a try, or if you like fun or you want to give fun a try, uh, <laughs> try out Shenzhen IO. All right, and on that note, um, let's come into game. Uh, Ferris, you are in your hometown. Do you remember its name? Um... I don't know. Do you want to just call it backwater? <laughs> you're you're in this hometown who you have so little regard for. Its name doesn't even matter. Okay. Um. It has been a couple years, maybe, since the last time we stepped in. Maybe not quite a couple years, but maybe like upwards of a year. Yeah. Um, since the last event, and how have things been going for you with the the folks of this town? Um, who was the guy that killed the, the remaining goblins from? Was it Tyrone? Mm-hmm. Okay. I feel like he's been, like, an increasing pain in Ferris's side. Because he's just, mm -hmm. like, he's so boisterous and also very openly racist. He's probably caused a lot of problems for Ferris. I feel like tensions are probably getting a little bit higher. But I don't know if anything, like, extremely bad has happened. Right. But it's just been, like, a growing yeah. animosity. Okay. Um... So that's that's kind of the story of what how things have been happening here for the last mm -hmm. while. Uh, what is the tavern in the town called, or the pub, or the you know? We have a pub. The, there's some sort of common house where everyone like goes to hang out and socialize and. No, no, no. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, and eat and drink and that sort of thing. What, what is the place called in this town? Oh God. You're asking me to name things. This I'm, is a this is a dangerous mistake, Neil. My favorite <laughs> pub name ever was the Disillusioned Intellectual. <laughs> <laughs> um, I could name it if you want, but I thought it might be nice to give some flavor no, to the no, game. No, do not do not give me the power to name things. I can barely name my own characters. Trust okay. me. The one thing I hate more, actually, no, there's nothing I hate more. I spent an hour and a half on the character creation screen in Morrowind. It uh, I I I'm horrible at choosing names. I like the ugly mug. Dread and chat suggested that. Uh, it's called the Royal Salon. Um, it's right. it's there. It's the ta it's the pub in town, the tavern in town, called the Royal Salon. And you're hanging out in here one day because, well, even racist elves who are ostracized from society need a place to come and drink and socialize and mm -hmm. get a hot meal when they're tired of cooking. Uh, and the doors open, and in walk three uh, short, hooded, cloaked figures that are obscuring their features. They don't go towards the bar, they kind of scout the area out for a little bit, standing next to each other, until one of them sees a, a table on the opposite side of the tavern from you. And, and the three of them go to that small table that's really only designed for two people, but they mm -hmm. like snag a chair and bring it over. Uh, can I get you to give me a perception check? Yep. All right. Uh, 
I think my perception is 14. I should probably go with my character sheet. I'm just going to go with 14 for now. I'll grab my sure. character sheet. 21. Ooh, let's hope your perception is 14. <laughs> um, sure. You, as they sit down, you catch sight of a long sword strapped to one of their sides. Uh, it's a fairly elegant weapon. It's not mm-hmm. like any of the other kind of hatchets and axes and kind of crappy gear you've seen around here. It's definitely like some sort of prized possession long sword. It's got like a, a graceful um, narrowing sheath to it that is somewhat embroidered with uh, different colored bands around it. It's probably not actually silver, but some sort of like grayish metal and some brass and some bronze. And, you know, it's slightly decorative. Okay. Um, the, so it, I, I don't see long swords very often, right? Mm-mm. Definitely not in this little village. I think Ferris probably walks around with his scimitar. Or it's a, no, it's a saber, isn't it? It's a saber. That's right. Yeah. God, it's been too long. <laughs> I think Ferris tends to walk around armed in town because people tend to give him like dirty looks like, oh, you don't belong here, half mm-hmm. elf. And he, he kind of has that, that like he's always armed as kind of this little uh, insurance of eh, what are you going to do about it? Right. And Makes he, um, yeah, I feel like he probably has it like a little bit concealed, but he probably uh, pulls back whatever's whatever's covering up his sword to make sure that, you know, no trouble goes on in this bar. Makes it very apparent that he's, he's armed. Sure. Uh, you know the people of this village better than you would like them, better than you would like to know them. Mm-hmm. And they're doing their best not to be overt, but you can tell that the conversations have changed. You know that uh, Farmer Joseph is usually the sort of guy who like hunches over, puts his elbows on the table, and just like puts his head in his soup bowl and like shovels food into his face. Mm-hmm. Uh, but now you see Farmer Joseph, like, leaning back in his chair, uh, kind of slightly facing away from the table, like, at an angle to his food, so that way he can see these cloaked figures out of the corner of his eye. And you know that uh, Marion, who is always, you know, dancing and playing some sort of a musical instrument, has kind of stopped and is now, like, resting, leaning against a wall rather than being her usual silly dancing self. Um, you can just, you notice these changes in the, the atmosphere of the pub uh, at the approach of these characters. Okay. I think Ferris kind of has this moment of wondering if he should go over and talk to them. And he just kind of thinks about it and realizes who he'd be trying to defend. And he just says, I don't care if they all catch fire. And just goes back to drinking his, goes back to drinking. Wants to wait and see how things play out. I mean, they haven't done anything at this point. No, they just wanna, sat down. They're yeah, totally... doesn't want to be too... Um, Assuming, wants yeah. to give him a little bit of a chance before he does anything. And they're pretty short. They're like five two, five three. Oh, they're, really? Yeah, they're not very tall. Okay. Um, that and you said they were all hooded, right? All hooded. Bunch of five two and five. The three. bartender, as right, Ferris, Ferris puzzles Ferris over is this. going to order a few drinks. There's three of them, right? There's three of them, yeah. He's going to order uh, four, I guess, glasses of wine if they have that. Okay. And he's going to take it over to that table. And try and get it as an excuse to sit down there. And I want to I wanna see if I can get a look at any of these people's faces. Because, like, shorter than average is pretty pretty typical of elves, right? Yes. So I, I want to, like, get a look at these people's faces. It's like, you, they're all shorter than, like, I would expect of a normal adult male, right? Or adult of an adult person. male, right. They could be females very easily. Um, mm-hmm. But they are they would be very short adult males. Okay, so yeah, I, I want to like, it seems like a like a long shot, but like maybe uh, Ferris's mom sent like elves down as like an envoy. Mm-hmm. Honestly has no idea, but something seems a little bit off about it. And he wants to see if he can get a look at their faces because I imagine elven features are pretty noticeable once you get close up. Probably. Definitely. I mean, you've seen your mom. She's just... Mm-hmm. Uh, so you head over uh, with your wine in tow, set it down, and the figures look up, and you definitely catch sight of one of them who looks up to meet your gaze. Mm-hmm. Uh, definitely an elven male. Uh, probably the first elven male you've ever seen in your whole life. Oh, yeah, probably. Yeah. The figure looks at you, says, uh, thank you, in common, heavily accented. Okay. Is it like an elven accent? Because I do speak elven fluent. It is. It is an okay. elven accent. 
I think Ferris sits down at the table and says, I have never met more than one other elf in my entire life, and today three walk into our tavern. They adjust slightly. You're saying this in Elven? Yeah. Um, and one of them says, Ah, you, you're a half-human. I prefer half-Elven. They exchange an uncomfortable look. Why would you pick your human side as default side? I think of it the other way around. Half-Elven implies um, a human is normal and that you are slightly interbred with elves. Aren't you elf who has been slightly interbred with humans? Half-human. Wouldn't half-Elven at least imply that I'm at least half-Elven? If I'm half-human, then I could only be quarter-Elven. One-tenth Elven. I Either suppose... way, I think we're getting lost in semantics here. Either way, I care far more for my elven lineage than my human one. But anyways, what brings you to this to this bar? Uh, we are not coming to this bar in particular. We are headed down somewhere else. This is just rest point. Uh, people seem fairly friendly. Seems easy enough. They're friendly until you get to know them. Hmm. Hmm. Well. Are you from Silvus? There's a, a nod all around. Uh, do, do we ever set my, or Ferris' mom's name? Uh, if you did, I have long forgotten. Shit. Uh, chat, save me here. I'm gonna look in my notes really fast. I'm gonna give it like 20 seconds, then I'm just gonna move on. I want to say it's like Lania or something like that, but I don't know where I'm pulling that from. I don't. Um. And I have no idea can... where my notes for this last session are. Yeah, if we don't find anything, I can work with Lania. That seems fine to me. <laughs> Dan? <laughs> uh, it's short for Daenerys. I'm not sure where I got that one from. Uh, yeah. Oh, wait, okay, I think yeah, I found my just... Ferris notes oh. here. Awesome. I think I found them. If it's not in there, then we'll just go. Mother's name is them. Martha, and your Martha. hometown name isn't Backwater, it's Ditchwater. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh my god, I'm. she's named Martha? She's Am named I Superman? Martha. Mm. Martha's one of the primary gods. She's the goddess of life and creation. It's a very common female name. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I, um, Ferris is going to, like, lean in a little bit and say, have you ever met an elven woman by the name of Martha? And I, I give, like, a brief description of, of her appearance. Uh, there's a Are slight chuckle Silva through you, the... You came from Silvis. Through the group. <laughs> uh, there are many elven women named Martha. It is the most common name amongst elven women. I give a description and say, in the past year she would have been traveling from from here. I uh, imagine not too many elves tend to leave Silvis. Wandering uh, outside of our lands is much more rare. I figured you might have seen her on the road. Uh, I am sorry. We have not encountered any wandering female elves. Uh, Silvis is less than a year from here, though, so maybe, maybe she's there. Maybe she returns maybe. to you soon. I don't know. Um, tell me, uh, young one, what is your name? My name is Yoon. Ferris. Excuse me. Ferris. Uh, they once again kind of like exchange uncomfortable glances. And this time they kind of lean in towards one side of a table and mutter to themselves. Still an elven, you might be able to catch a word here or there, but they're trying mm -hmm. to, you know, talk without you being able to hear them. And then they break up and they say, Ah, Ferris, um, that is interesting name. Where did you get this? From my mother. She's the one who named me. 
Uh, as far as I know, was my... your mother's mother and father? Do I have any idea? I know I know um, Martha <laughs> taught me <laughs> elven history, but I don't know if she taught anything about like our family tree. Yeah, I think that's all a mystery to you. Okay, I I don't know. I never learned much about my past. It's very interesting. Find elf, uh, uh half human named Ferris in, in Drekis. It's very interesting. Do you know somebody named Ferris? Uh, I am surprised to learn that you do not. Uh, and they are, seem to be about to launch into something when mm. Tyrone waddles over. Uh, he's got, you know, some brass knuckles that he's found or had made for him at some point in time mm -hmm. that he's put on, one on each hand, and he sets his brass knuckled hands heavily onto the table and says, All right, you guys. I don't like to see so many people whispering with so many weapons in my part of the world. So why don't you take off those hoods and tell me who you are before I make a mess of you. I think Ferris, like a, Ferris kind of interrupts this. From the yeah, back Ferris of the kind bar. of interrupts this and just says, I just remembered, Tyrone, we have to be somewhere. Why don't you excuse us? And he, he starts to gesture to the elves, and he sort of gestures to the door. Uh, the elves take a little glance at Tyrone's brass knuckles. They take a glance at you. They pause for a moment, and then the leader nods slightly. They all get up. Um, and walk out. All right, and I he'll take them back to uh to his house. Uh, why did you let that human tell you what to do? I'd like to kill him where he stands, but that would cause more problems than it would solve. Hmm. And believe me, this is on the low end of the things I've had to deal with here. Does not sound like this is very good place for you. No, you get used to it. Why do you stay? You are better than these people. You will live maybe not as long as Full Elf, but uh, you will outlive all these people by a long time. Why stay? When I went up to you, you didn't understand that I was Elven until I, until I started to speak our tongue. If I went to Silvis, do you honestly believe they'd let me in? Hmm... <laughs> you would probably not be very welcome. Uh, you, they, you would not fit in well. Your lifespan is too short to properly be member of society. Uh, you know, how, how can you go on hundred year mission when, you know, that is most of your life. Maybe half figured. your life. Yeah. It's a um, not personal thing, just mechanical thing. You, your life too small to fit in. Your your soul is too small for big souled society. It's okay. It's not your fault. All right. Anyway. But why stay here? There are many other towns. Uh, not everyone be big meathead. Everywhere else is filled with the same people. Humans don't change that much. Mm. And no matter where you go, that's where that's what everybody is. Sure, I might be able to find some dwarves if I travel far enough, but for the most part, I'm gonna be living amongst humans. Mm. I don't think my circumstances will improve much. Elves aren't seen much outside of Silvis. I don't think I have very good odds of finding more, more accepting folk anywhere. I suppose life for someone like you must be difficult. No fit in anywhere. Awkward sized soul. Well, enough of that. What, what were you going to say before we were interrupted about Ferris? Ah, uh, uh, well, um. Hmm. You know of the legend of, um, Caldonia, the southern continent? Yes. Um. My grandfather. His name Yin. He was born on Caldonia. My my father was born there too, but sent away uh, 
just a, a few years before, well, before the gods brought, brought the wrath upon the people. Hmm. Once upon a time. No. Wrong way of saying. Uh. We are here. We are going down to Southern Drekis, to Winterlands. Uh, mystics back home have long said that when Caldonia uh, became like Icicle, that a few elves survived um, and escaped to the Frostlands, to the Winterlands, to Southern Drekis, to a land of always snow. We are here looking for them. Uh, they're probably not alive. They're probably quite dead by now, but we are looking for remnants of them, uh, looking for evidence or proof, um, looking to return their bones and learn more about what happened down south. And one of them was named Ferris. Uh, no, Ferris was name of great elf sorcerer uh not elf king but um you would not understand position in society but great elf sorcerer back in caldonia long time ago uh probably died with the frost maybe escaped to winterlands so half elf here named ferris is a uh, interesting maybe you related to great Sorcerer? But if so, why would uh, your mother not tell you? And he kind of looks at your sword and goes, You also don't look like Sorcerer. No. I'm gonna shut the window really fast. <sighs> Sorry about that. No worries. No, no, I've I've never practiced in magic myself. Hmm. Have you tried? No. Maybe one day you try. Maybe you secretly sorcerer all along and do not know. Perhaps. Could you fund me the, the 5,000 gold to buy my first spellbook? <laughs> that is not given to you? That is not gift down here? Oh, human society is so crass. Anyone in Silvis uh, show potential for magic. Free pass on training. Education for all. I think I think Ferris kind of like very di like with great difficulty kind of trains his expression into a more neutral neutral face. And he says, "So the Frostlands. You truly mm. think they fled there?" Well, it is known that no one lives in Caldonia, so if elves survived, uh, must be in Frostlands. Caldonia is dead. Well, I've never been to the Frostlands myself, but I can tell you they're probably not much better. Frozen year-round. Mm. No real mm -hmm. change in weather. Why would they stop there? Why not head further north? Maybe go there and not make it all the way? Uh, maybe they were leaving just as freeze happened, make it to lands of winter, not make it any further. Uh, maybe afraid of humans and make camp, but uh, we, we do not know. Um, this is why we come, to find out. Hmm. There is a place in the Frostlands, the Cinder Springs. I've never, I've never been there myself, but if it's any sort of... Supposedly the water there isn't frozen, which might mean it's some sort of hot spring. It's possible they could have survived there. It would have been a source of warmth. Hmm. Well, we are going to look. <clears throat> Maybe... You leave all these people behind? Uh, it could be very helpful for us to have a half-human travel with us in order to... Mm, smooth things over along the way. Uh, not everybody has been as friendly as your buddy back there. Uh, we have had less warm welcomes in other town. Really? You're sure my soul's not too small to fit into this party? For our purposes, you will do quite fine. 
And please, do not think that is a disparaging remark. Uh, I am stating uh, fact of nature, not uh, value judgment upon you. You know, like, a, you are much taller than me. That is not value judgment. Your soul is much smaller than mine. Not a value judgment. Just the way things are. Wait, how tall am I? That's a good question. Oh, yeah, I am really tall for, for a half-elf. I'm 5'7". Yeah. First kind of thinks... There's something about this guy that really, uh... That really kind of puts him off. He doesn't fully trust this. There's just, like, something about this person that, that Ferris doesn't feel is right. But at the same time, it's not like he has anything good to look forward to here. Mm -hmm. And he kind of thinks it over and says, All right, Unimir. I'll travel down to the Frostlands with you. Excellent. We help you burn house down. Burn the house down? Am I not coming back? Uh, is that not how people do things here? When they move away, they burn everything down? Not typically. You want to come back? They look, like, exasperated. No. Fer Ferris kind of thinks about that for a second says, I suppose not. Why would normally you Normally, people, people wouldn't normally burn their houses down. I mean, it's it's a perfectly good construction that other it's, people it's, could um, not. Of course, I'm sure your construction is uh, very fine for human land buildings, but uh, is symbolic of uh, moving on in life. Burn house down is a clean slate. Uh, oh, I see... Uh, your lives very short, time to build new house, long, problematic. It's less, it's less the time span and more the cost. Apparently you can you can front thousands of gold for anybody who shows potential in magic, but most people here are struggling to get by. But it's honestly, not. now that I think about it, fuck those people, let's burn this house down. Hell, we help you burn house down. Uh, you have pitch, you have... Uh, what, 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 I can what get us kindling. Have? I have flint and steel, I can get us kindling. We can make Excellent. a fire by tonight. Excellent. Ooh, that's fast fire. Let's take time. Uh, we want good bonfire. Um, hmm. We will need uh, bright powders. Hmm. Is there a major town nearby we can get flash powder? We must have multiple colors when house burns, you know? Red for the doors, green for the chimney, uh, blue for the windows. Must be big ceremony. Do I, do I recognize, like, this idea of flash powder? Probably not. I think this is a strange concept they're giving you. Okay. How close are we to Solwick? Um... I know it's like a little bit north of, I mean, Solwick's pretty close to the Frostlands and I know we're somewhat close to that. Yeah, so I maybe you guys are like halfway, let me bring up the map for chat. Maybe you guys are like somewhere, you had fought with goblins, right? So you, you maybe you're somewhere in this region over here, because there's mm -hmm. goblins that live in that part of the world. So you're right. probably closer to Thickle Glade than you are to Solwick. Okay. Well, there's. I don't think we'd find anything. Flash powder? I don't. I don't think we'd find that here. But there, there's a there's a larger town nearby called Thickle Glade. If we if we're willing to make the diversion, we could stop there. They might have it there. There are nods all around. If we're really desperate, we could go to Solwick. That's a that's a larger settlement. Hmm. We try Fickle Glade. Uh, we get what we need. We come back. We burn house. We go on. Uh, ooh. Um, how awkward question. Um, how many years left in your life? Uh, you. Uh, we we do not see many half humans. Um, cannot tell very well if you are very old. Right, or... right. I understand. Uh, if I'm very lucky, 200. Okay, you More have time. More likely 150. Okay, you you have time. Uh, you you not die on five year quest. It's okay. No, no, no. Okay. I'd be withering away before that, I imagine. Good, good. Um, and. So, uh, do we? Do you have anything you want to like role play in Thickle Glade? Uh, I no, don't have any no. stories uh, there. All, to I, tell. all I really want to do, like the whole time we are traveling together, Ferris is constantly asking about Elven legends, mm. and I want to compare them to what uh, Martha told him throughout his life. Because, like, 
there's something about this guy that still puts him off, and I'm not sure if he'd be bullshitting about like actual elven legends. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, like, I guess I'm just kind of staying a little bit skeptical and wary. But yeah, Ferris is constantly asking about things and trying to learn a little bit more about the elven people. Okay. Uh, so you, he will answer your questions. He seems to be very patient with you. Mm -hmm. uh, still, the other two people haven't said a word yet. They've let this guy, Yoon, uh, mm -hmm. do all the talking. Um, the legends that you guys are sharing have the typical sort of inconsistencies that you might have if you're talking to someone else about a legend, right? Like, if we're, right. if we're talking about Bloody Mary, I'll be like, oh yeah, she used to inhabit the bar next to my elementary school and you're like that's bullshit because bloody mary inhabited the bar next to my elementary school and you know you know how mm -hmm. urban legends right. yeah, are yeah. slightly different around the place so but the the gist is more or less the same between them right yeah the gist is more or less the same between i want to say like 90 percent of the things you ask they're going to be a few that are uh, differ yeah. pretty strongly but overall you get the feeling that your mother was telling you the truth or yeah. was telling you well, the same think, sort of things that this guy is? I yeah, I think I was more suspicious of this person. And he was he was trying to learn new things, but he was also sprinkling questions that he already knew about to mm -hmm. try and see if he could like test this person's authenticity. Mm -hmm. But um, once he's a little bit more comfortable with that, I think he just tries to learn as much as he can about things he doesn't yet know. Okay, excellent. I think this is gonna be a good place for our first break. Um, sure. No, let's not. Let's come back and do the house okay. burning, and then we'll do the first break. So uh, you get you go to Thickle Glade. It's maybe a half day from where you are. Uh, is that about right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not even a half day. So yeah, um, you manage to get there. But they find a shop that will sell them the correct sort of uh, flash powders and mm -hmm. uh, powdered metals, um, and then they walk you through this like long process of setting up your house. Like you can get it so it'll burn down, no problem. But they right. put these like powders in these um, uh, like bolts of cloth. And so mm -hmm. that when the cloth begins to burn, it'll like unfurl and can like dump the powder out in a, a sheet, which will then, you know, as the, the house goes up, it'll like create this like jet of blue color or this jet of red color that kind of like falls and flares everywhere. Fer Ferris um, is like asking every possible, like, what is the purpose of this? Like, why why do you use flash powders when you burn these things down? Is um symbol symbolic, right? Uh, red is symbol of um, heart, is symbol of you know home. So you, we put on front door. Blue is symbol of like hopes and dreams and looking forward and prospects and future and vision. So we put on windows. You know, um, green is life, is energy, so we put near fireplace because fireplace is center of all home. Without fireplace, everyone die. Uh, you know, and he kind of gives you these explanations, but they're all kind of like loosey-goosey, touchy-feely, mm -hmm. hippie child bullshit. Like, you know, it's right. all about the symbolism, man. Like the moving on of these things. Okay. Uh, how does how does Ferris respond to this like really touchy? feely get in touch with your symbolism so you don't have bad juju when you burn your house down uh it seems weird but humans also bury their dead so i mean every, every culture has its weird and nonsensical practices okay okay <laughs> um, which which seems like every every dead body just waits for its opportunity to come back to life and eat people so you would think <laughs> we'd start burning them but no no we'll just bury them instead all right uh you guys burn the house down Yep. And when you do, people from the town come running, freaking out that like the forest is gonna catch fire, and there's like the three oh, elves. I think Ferris. Like, I think around. Ferris has taken like care in setting that up to make sure the blaze isn't gonna like spread to any nearby trees. Absolutely right, but the the like, townspeople. Ferris does have a respect out. for nature. Okay, yeah. Yeah, just, the townspeople. Like, I, I want to mention he does have that. Like he doesn't want to burn down a forest. Ferris right. does not start forest fires. Good, good. That lesson has been learned by all the people of. Uh, Oregon, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, I read that story. That was, mm, that was aggravating to read. Oh yeah. No, I um, I had a player who basically burned a forest down to kill a giant spider once. Oh, it's God. like, oh yeah, you're in the middle of a forest, and they're like, yeah, no, I'll do the flaming sphere or whatever it's called, and I'll roll right. it around anyways. And <laughs> yeah, let's just start forest fires. That's great. Yeah. I think they got executed. <laughs> I mean, it was like. The, the the village or city or whatever it was basically survived off of the forest, so right. kind of fucked them. Yeah, don't don't burn forests down, kids. Yeah. 
Um, so the people come out, they see the house on fire, and then they see those, like, bolts of colors, and they all kind of, like, they originally were coming up very angry-like, and they kind of mm. stop when they see these bright colors flaring off of it, and maybe retreat a little bit? Mm-hmm. Um... The elves at this point have, like, taken their hoods off and are very clearly elves with, you know, big pointy ears. Yeah. Uh, and the townsfolk give you all a wide breath. But as, like, the fires begin to burn down a little bit and as you guys start to leave, the village elder approaches you. Um, we don't remember. His name is Dingus. Mm-hmm. Uh, and was standing... he the person who said that I was cursed or is that the person who was trying to get people to go see No, Helga the is the person who said you were cursed. Okay. She's the oracle. Uh, Dingus is the village elder and Tyrone's grandfather. Okay. Um, Tyrone's standing right behind uh, Dingus and Dingus says, Ferris, this is the last straw. You can't just burn things down. And who are these strangers that are helping you? You've brought foreigners into our home? You have to go. That was the plan. Ferris just kind of like sits there and looks at him for a second. I think like he he probably was being kind of like deferential for the most part when he lived in this village. So he didn't want to start problems with people and he just doesn't give a shit anymore. Mm -hmm. And he just like says that strip and just kind of like looks at him with this very flat expression and just kind of like meets eyes and doesn't say anything else and kind of waits for him to say something. He just kind of steps back to Tyrone's side and kind of elbows Tyrone a little bit, who steps forward and goes, that's right, Ferris. We don't want to see you or your ugly friends around here ever again. If you come back, I'll bash your head in. Oh, Tyrone, perhaps one day I'll return just to kill you. And then Ferris starts to like walk off into the distance. All right. Uh, You and your companions walk off into the night as the embers of your house burn down. Uh, the occasional puff of color going off here or there from some small unburned bag of powder. And this is where we will take our first break. Uh, See you guys on the other side. Bye-bye.